Hello and welcome to this vSuite version 0.3 video tutorial where I'm very quickly going to cover how to create a Windrows within the Blender scene. So if you've watched the activation video, hopefully you're in a similar position to this where we have a node editor window opened up. We've already created a vSuite node tree within our main vSuite node group signified by this sun icon here and via our add input nodes vi location menu item we've created a vi location node within our node tree here so to create a windrows all we need to do is go to add analysis nodes nodes vsuite windrows and when we connect our vi location node to our vi windrows node we should have some options appear that define how we're going to create the windrows. But bear in mind the VI location node, as opposed to just providing a user inputted latitude and longitude, needs to provide hourly wind data for us to plot a windrows. So we need to turn this menu item to EPW. When we've selected EPW, we have a drop down list of all the different climate files that we have available to the vSuite. And adding um, extra locations to that drop down menu involves getting the relevant EPW file for the location that you're interested in and moving it to the correct place within the vSuite add on directory. And the details of where that directory is located is available in the vSuite user manual. So once I've got a node connection set up correctly, I can simply press create windrows and a windrows is created within my scene. Now this wind, windrows is just a standard blender object. So it can be scaled, it can be moved, um, it can even be rotated. But bear in mind that all the components of the V-suite consider positive Y, which is in this up direction, as signified by this green Y arrow down here in the corner. Uh, the V-Suite always considers positive Y to be north. So if you do rotate the windrows, it is now out of alignment with how the V-Suite considers compass direction. Um, we can change the range of the year that we wish to plot the wind data for, and we can create different kinds of windrows. So, this is now a contour plot, as opposed to the first wind, first wind rose, which was a histogram plot. Um, again, scaled down and moved as we see fit. Um, there is within our three D view properties panel, and we can open up the three D three D view properties panel if it's not already open, with this little plus sign up in the top right corner here. Um, at the bottom of this properties panel is the vSuite display tab. And there is one option specific to Windroses within this vSuite display tab, and that is the legend option. Once we press legend, we get a um, sort of a legend that relates the color of the last created Windrose to speed. So if we look a little bit more closely at our windrows, we can see that these radial lines denote frequency. And obviously, um, these lines coming out from the windrows represent direction. So for nearly 17% of the time, the wind is coming from the south. And for, hmm, I don't know, maybe about 12% of the time, the wind is coming from the north. And within each direction, there is a sort of breakdown of how often the wind is blowing at each of these different speeds as designated by these different colors. So there are five different types of windrows you can create, two types of histogram, three types of contour, and we have the ability to control um, what range of year we plot the details for. And we could create a windrows for January, February, March, etc., and have all 12 sort of visible in the scene at the same time. 
Um, the only other option is this display active option. And once we've finished actually sort of visualizing the wind roses, it's a good idea to turn this off, um, especially if we're about to load up a new Blender file, because if we have this still turned on when we load up a new Blender file, it can crash Blender. Um, so I think that's about it for the creation of wind roses. Okay, thanks for watching.